don't think I've ever seen such waters in my entire life. You cannot stop thinking, oh, if I was here in my kayak, all the bones of my body would break. You're small when you're out there. You're probably thinking, what is she doing here? Actually, this is exactly what I came here for. I came here to do the Patagonia Triple Crown. Three mighty rivers. The Rio Baker, the Rio Pascua, and the Rio Bravo. Why am I doing this? I've heard about those rivers for so many years and I've always been attracted to Patagonia maybe because it's so far from everything else. <gasps> Thankfully, I'm not alone in this. First, Eric Boomer. We call him Boomer. When no one else sees the line, he can see it. Being optimistic, he also thinks he's a really good dancer. And there's Ben. What are you doing? <laughs> he's not a really good dancer, but he's probably the most experienced expedition kayaker you can find. And he also thinks that kayaks are like backpack and he loves hiking around with them. This is pretty much the ideal team. We work well together. I got you. And we always have each other's back. Our first stop for the Patagonia Triple Crown was the Rio Baker. It's really well known for kayakers because it's big. It's unlike anything you find in Europe. There is just so much water. It's crystal blue water. You can actually drink it. The rapid is so big, we cannot even see Ben. Here he comes, sloping down. Little blue duck here. Big water on the baker means about 800 ton of water per second. I think that's a lot. <laughs> Sometimes you flip and you just pull back up and you have a big smile on your face. But you also need to remember that like, if you actually swim, it's gonna be ugly. So it's usually worth the fight. Like right off the bat. Toto Baker. Toto Baker. So we had our eyes on three main rivers, but since we had six weeks in front of us, we also decided to stop and explore as many other rivers as we could. Kayaking in, in Patagonia is, is quite challenging. You never really know what you're gonna find, so you kinda have to expect everything and be prepared. The kayak empty is 22 kilos and then in it we have flipping gear, food, cooking gear, bare paddle, row bag, a little rope, big rope, slings, an ATC, lockers, pulley, GPS, dry clothes, which makes the boat really heavy. Sometimes you scout a river on the map, so you hike all the way up the river and you find out that it's not runnable. 
there's one nice rapid, but uh, there's also that huge waterfall, so that's a no-go. It's not runnable. It's cold. It's unrunnable. So you hike your way down the river with loaded kayaks. It's Ben's definition of fun. It's nice here. <laughs> Mine, not so much. We've been hiking up for, for two days. If it doesn't go, I might cry. Bummer. It's a little bit depressing. It's, it's part of the game if you want to. We gotta find the perfect rapid. It has to be up there somewhere. Unfortunately, Boomer had to head back home. Also, Boomer is the optimistic of the group, so, so we definitely missed that. We didn't miss his dance move at all, but we can't tell him. We finally made it south uh, to, I would say, the biggest river of this trip, which is the Rio Pascua. We have a long approach. We kind of Paddle down this river, across a lake, up a creek, bushwalk over the pass into the Lake O'Higgins. Once we're out there, you're pretty much by yourself, which is really cool and scary, but mostly cool. Ah. And then we have to paddle about um, 40, 50 kilometers of flat water. After three days, Right at the end of, of the Lake O'Higgins, we we reached the the start of the of the Pasqua. It's way louder than any other place, and also you see the spray literally coming up like 30 meters up the gorge. cannot stop thinking, oh, if I was here in my kayak, I would just probably get destroyed and all the bones of my body would break. Yeah, I mean, you feel small. You're small when you're out there. And then you paddle across another lake and you reach another one of those monster rapids and you paddle a little bit more and you reach another one of them and there's three portages pretty much back to back. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm no fucking hydrologist, but this, this river is fucking high. Like, it's, it's really high. By the time we actually reached the canyon, I think we were both already really scared. Yeah, it's definitely not, like, the most ideal headspace to be in going towards this gorge, just thinking, whoa, it's way too high. It's, like, already too high. Look. Okay. Anyways. I'm going to try to keep an open mind. That's what I'm going to try to do. Well, we got given two main info. The first info is like most of the river is swirly class 2 free. And the other info is like, but be careful. There is a really hard rapid, which could be a death hole somewhere in the canyon in between the two walls and hard to scout, hard to portage. Whenever we were in easy water, it was definitely harder than what was described to us. And then at any moment, we expect this horrific hydraulic. So basically, you're like going down this river with constant fear.
day five on the Rio Pascua. We entering the canyon. Hopefully it will be good, but it should be pretty, pretty fun. I'm scared. I'm really scared. The river is is unlike anything else that I've paddled before. Like, because there is so much water in those in those in between those walls that the whole river goes like up and down. That shit is just so full on. Good, we're doing really well though. Just switching back and forth, whatever we can, and just getting it. I don't know what else we're supposed to do. Whenever we had the chance to stop, get a look around the next rapid if needed, uh, we'd do so. One of the things that was the hardest is those whirlpool. And those whirlpool are so powerful that even in my kayak, I would get sucked down once in a while. And... Yeah, you got it! You got it! It's like he totally disappeared. At this point, we've portaged the last notch. And we know that the big rapid we got told is not there. Next day after we got off the Pasqua, we drove to the Bravo. It was just so nice not to be scared. This is fun. This is why we kayak. Maybe it was a great way to end the trip and, you know, Good reminder, ah, actually, I, this is why I love kayaking, not, not the other thing. It's the greatest thing about exploration kayaking is that sometimes you don't find the good kayaking, but it's still a beautiful adventure.